Welcome back to Seat Time. I'm Woody and today we're going to take a look at the power button, the on off switch for my 2018 Sherco that caused such havoc for me on the 2022 death march. What power button? Like the bike has a power button. And I don't want you guys to worry. I also have my jorts on. So just because you can't see them doesn't mean we're not having a little bit of fun underneath the table. If you did not get a chance to check out the last video, please go do that. It is about the death march. One day, 180 miles in Taylor Park, and unfortunately, why myself and my Sherco did not finish. So spoiler alert, the bike didn't finish, I didn't finish, and we thought it was down to this on-off button. That's what we're gonna look at today. When I got home, I took the button off, and that is when I realized, holy crap, this button does not have a backing. So as this rocker switch goes back and forth, you know what you're dealing with? Everything can get in. There is nothing that is waterproofing this switch from the outside in. I think it's even a little bit more of a joke that it comes with a waterproof plug. So here, this switch, this is the new one that I've got to put on. This switch has a waterproof plug to plug in over there, but of course, this electronics up here is completely open to the elements. Considering how tough the Shady Burrow Enduro was on myself and the Sherco, I think this is another layover from that event, just like with the radiator and loss of radiator fluid, that I just didn't realize how beat up myself and that bike were after the event. So what do you do? How do you test an on-off switch to see if it's going on? Well, that is where a multimeter comes in. And in this case, we're just gonna be looking at using the ohms. Now, I am not a scientist, I'm not an electrician, I don't know all the things, but I do know at least that there is a switch that I can turn on that'll make a noise if a current is coming through the switch. That's what we're gonna do. If you're someone who knows more about ohms and like resistance testing and stuff, go ahead and drop some knowledge down in the comments so we can all get a little bit smarter. So the real concept is though, in the off switch, right, there should not be a noise. Sweet. Contacts are touching, no noise, okay? Now, in Colorado, that noise was not there, right? When we had the on off switch, while riding the bike, it would just turn off. And when I got home, unfortunately I did not film this, this was covered in dirt. Covered in dirt, right? Insane. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to recreate that as a potential test to see if that, if we could recreate it. I wanted to see if we could recreate that test. So you know what I did? I've got my little mermaid bucket here of dirt. I've got my old switch. So we're gonna put some dirt in here we're gonna maneuver it a little bit to try to work that dirt in there and see if we can recreate what happened in Colorado. Dirt, 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 dirt. We're putting the dirt in the switch, dirt in the switch. Make sure we keep the dirt away from the new switch. But now, ooh, uh, mm, 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 mm. working the dirt in, working the dirt in. Look at that. you can see the dirt falling through the switch. Like that's how bad this thing is. Oh, and one of the things that I would love some help on is finding a better on off switch, right? Like I bought a replacement and it's the same thing. It has a waterproof plug and a not waterproof on off switch. An old WR I had back in the day uh, when I first started racing again did have an on off switch, but it was a very uh, good on off switch. It was waterproof. It worked. It did its job. It wasn't going to let the elements get in the way like what we saw in Colorado and with this switch. So if you've got any idea what I should be looking for when it comes to new on off switches, on off switches are going to be waterproof. So I can't buy a new bike anytime soon. The newer Shercos don't have an on-off switch anymore. So I'm gonna wanna replace this one. The re I wanna replace the replacement with one that's truly waterproof. What should I be looking for? I'd love your help. Please drop that in the comments. So now, we are in the power position. I can barely even get into the on position. We got so much dirt in there, it's so awesome. So let's see if we get a noise. Now of course I've got a, look at that. Contacts are touching, no noise. That is exactly what happened to me in Colorado. We just proved that with a little bit of environmental stress, this switch is worthless. That is what happened to me in Colorado. That's ridiculous. I need your help finding a better switch. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the Little Mermaid bucket back with my daughter's toys after I empty out the rest of the mud. But I am also gonna install this switch. Now you don't need to watch me do that. If you wanna look at how I install this switch, I do have a cool part that I use for that, and that is in the small parts video. So again, if you haven't seen the Death March video, please go give that a watch. If you haven't seen the small parts video where I actually put a cool part on, a neat small part that makes a big upgrade for the Shurko, go watch that video. But now, what else happens to a motorcycle when you ride it a lot? The air filter gets dirty. The bike gets dirty. I got the F3 air filter cleaner that you've seen the guy all over Instagram with. And now I want to show you guys how well it works. Then we're going to install a new chain. I know you've seen the guy on Instagram. He's got the fast foam filter cleaner F3. Well, we're going to test it out today. So I've got my four filters here. Now this is supposed to be good for 10 filters. So we'll see how that works. We're going to get about half of it in there. Can I get, oh yeah, just bust it open. Yeah, this is a trash can, it's not a bucket, but it's what I got, so we're gonna go with it. Now, apparently, this solution activates with the water. So really what we're doing right now is trying to get the cleaning solution in the filter. So we got the little KTM 65 filter here, Liam's bike, apparently, that comes out. So we're just gonna manuge that solution through it. Now again, apparently the soap activates with water. So we're about to find out how that goes. So we did that, what, maybe 15 seconds, something like that? <gasps> Ooh, let's see how clean it gets, guys. Now hopefully the water doesn't uh, get me this time like it did before. Oh, how clean does it get? How clean does it get? How clean does it look like it's drinking? Now here's the problem. It says specifically, once you get it wet, you do not want to dip it back in the solution because of course, if the water activates the solution, you're just gonna put this in there and it's gonna activate all of that solution, which isn't a good thing. So what that's telling me is I should have dipped it twice, right? Okay, so let's see. So that's not very clean. So we're gonna go to this guy, see what happens. Unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna wind up using way more of this solution than I wanted to. Hey, now that is much cleaner than it was going in. Now it says don't twist, but you can squeeze, whatever. Let's activate the solution, guys. Oh yeah, that's some good squeegee right there. Hopefully me bending over like this and my George isn't too awkward. Tell you yeah. what, Okay, now I was not the one that, um, oh, looks like we're still getting some suds out of there, so let's keep rinsing. So yeah, so this one definitely should have been dunked twice. So if I really wanted to clean it, I would wait for it to dry and do it again. Now these two obviously look pretty disgusting, so we're gonna see what they look like with a little bit of solution. See that squeezing out of there? That's pretty good. You know what? We're gonna not double dip this. That was squeezed in there for a good 10, 15 seconds. Got the solution in. Let's go see what happens. I can tell you this, it smells good. It's like cotton candy-ish. Give them a twist. No twisting, because you know, they say no twisting. Twisting's bad. Twisting actually will probably break up the glue over time. So you can see those look pretty much the same. Now this one should have been double dipped, right? But we've also done this three times in this cleaner. I'm not gonna lie. I don't wanna waste this whole bottle on four of these, but so we're gonna do this one. We're gonna squeeze it nice and good, put it back in and try to do it quote unquote a second dip. See where we get. I mean, in the long run, not too bad. And the thing is too, is this, this Twin Air and that last one we just did, they're both pre-oiled. So I got these from Twin Air pre-oiled. So whatever they use is obviously a little bit different than what I was using on that first Twin Air. 
Uh, again, Liam's was not done by me. That was done by the previous owner. Uh, so we said we're gonna double dip, right? Let's see what happens. And in the long run, by double dipping, I could just be picking up more dirt, but who knows, right? I mean, honestly, that did get more off. All right, try not to soak myself. Guys, this filter is getting pretty darn clean. So you can see, I mean, it's tough because they weren't exactly the same amount of dirty, right, going in, but they were pretty close. This was done with double dip. This was done without double dip. You definitely see the difference. And honestly, it looked pretty darn good, like this one. So here's one thought though. This is supposed to be biodegradable. Considering that both of those twin airs were pre-oiled, I just don't believe that they're pre-oiled with biodegradable cleaner. So a lot of people are gonna use those pre-oiled and just toss them. One, that's not good for the environment. We don't wanna do that because that's just gonna sit in the landfill. So we wanna reuse them. But if we're using a deep biodegradable cleaner on a non-biodegradable oil, it's still oil going right into the ground. Once or twice, not the end of the world. Over and over again by billions of people, it's a problem. So that's just an ecosystem thing that we still need to figure out. Overall, this works. You just kind of have to figure out what your system is going to be for it. Three links coming off. Sweet, I didn't screw it up too much. I even got the master clip in correctly. One, I hope you guys learned something. Two, I hope you helped me learn something by putting in useful information in the comments. If you don't have any useful information, hopefully you put something in the comments to at least make me laugh. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, Liam and I are gonna keep riding, keep getting seat time. We've been doing some mountain biking, some dirt biking. We actually just went to DeSoto BMX to do a little bit of BMX riding to introduce him to what a gate start feels like and pumping through a BMX track. Seriously though, if we don't get a chance to see you guys on the trail, at least we'll get to see you on the internet. Enjoy getting seat time. Peace. You know, protection. That's really what we're here for, latex.